In late March 2024, a conference about Viking Age combat was held at the Danish National Museum in Copenhagen. Archaeologist Gustav Sölberg had invited a number of experts, scholars, martial artists, as well as reenactors, to discuss options for future research into the subject. Gustav is an expert for the two-handed axe of the late Viking Age, the so-called Dane Axe. He's currently working on his doctoral thesis, which is about Viking Age combat. And to this end, he examines wear marks on surviving period weaponry. He's also running a series of tests with modern swordsmen comparing the results of their engagements with trauma as seen on skeletal remains from the archaeological record. The first lectures were about the various sources, first of all the written sources that could possibly give us some hints, some clues about the reality of Viking Age combat. To this end, Dr. Sixt Wetzler the director of the Deutsches Kling Museum, the German Blade Museum, and long-term practitioner of Filipino martial arts, had previously analyzed combat sequences in the sagas of the Icelanders. Dr. Wetzler pointed out that there are indeed a couple of sequences which indicate first-hand experience with historical combat, and that there are indications of awareness of martial arts systems elsewhere, However, all these sequences relate to the 13th and 14th centuries, the time of the writing of the sagas. Thus, as a template for reconstructing Viking Age combat, the sagas of the Icelanders are completely inadequate a source. There is absolutely no reliable data or information in this regard at all. Dr. Antti Ilyas, who has written a monumental work on the Fechtbuch, the Fight Book 133, continued to examine the relevance of these later medieval fighting manuals and related texts for the reconstruction or the research into Viking Age combat. He admonished to be extremely careful to draw any conclusions regarding earlier combat systems and also pointed out that even regarding later fighting, we learn more about the ideas of martial arts systems and training rather than the reality of actual combat. Dr. Ilyas proceeded to examine a couple of passages from the 13th century Norwegian King's Mirror, which refer to training. He said that it's of utmost importance to read these sources in their original version to get a clear idea of specific technical terms. He said that there may be some indication that there was a systematic approach to combat that predates the later Fechtbücher, the late medieval fight books. However, he also emphasized that it is important to be cautious because such sources may not necessarily describe the reality of common training, leave alone combat. After a weapon handling session in which we got to see a couple of original artifacts from the period, Dr. Anna Pedersen continued to explain in her lecture the archaeological contexts of such weapon finds, drawing on her decades of experience as an archaeologist, as well as author of an influential book on Danish Viking Age weapon burials, and editor of a more recent study of Viking Age horse riders. Archaeologist Rolf Warming, who has a background in Filipino martial arts, just like Sixt Wetzler and Ante Ilyas, continued to give a summary of his extensive research into shields of the Viking Age and preceding eras. The work of his and his colleagues provides a wealth of data and information which allows for a reliable reconstruction of fighting shields of the age. 
The final lecture of day one was about the current state of Viking Age combat reenactment in Denmark. It was held by long-term practitioner and reenactor Klaus Pedersen, who also is a former training officer in the Danish army. Klaus explained details of training and how they employ tactics in their engagements. In the ensuing discussion, the obvious differences between a modern blunt weapon combat sports and historical fighting were pointed out. And attendees discussed how to design tests that would involve reenactors and yield meaningful results from a research perspective. Given that reenactors would be interested in partaking in such radically different setups in the first place. Day two started with my lecture about early medieval sword design and how the shaping of the sword was influenced by cultural implications on the one hand and combat requirements on the other. Regularly occurring aberrations from the obvious aesthetic ideal of symmetry may be explained as customization of individual swords. And this may put archaeologists in a position to even tell whether a sword was used by a right-handed or a left-handed fighter. In the final demonstration, Tom Yesu and Emil Ogara explained how their expertise in glima, that is Icelandic wrestling, influences their approach to Viking sword and shield combat. Alas, they pointed out that one has to be cautious because there is no unbroken lineage from the days of the Vikings to modern Glima. And whatever your martial arts background, it will inevitably have an impact on how you interpret historical sources and approach the reconstruction of historical combat. Finally, Emil and Tom shared results from their work with the two-handed axe of the late Viking Age, the so-called Dane axe. They explained which sources they used and how they develop fighting technique for this two-handed weapon and gave a very impressive presentation thereof. I actually filmed the complete presentation and if you want to see that 15-minute video, just follow the link in the caption. In the final discussion, Anna Pedersen pointed out that the work of practitioners in previous years and the practical approaches to Viking Age combat and weaponry have yielded results which are valuable for archaeologists and highlight aspects of historical weaponry that have previously gone unnoticed. There was a consensus that it is well worth continuing research into combat despite all the caveats. There are so many things that we will never know for certain, but still it would be important for museums and educational institutions to offer to the public combat displays that are based on actual research and explain their preliminary nature and the sources and ideas that they are based upon.